So Jibreel kept coming to me and saying, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, take care of your neighbor. You know, subhanAllah, serve your neighbor. And this is beautiful, because that's the cornerstone of every religion, right? Love thy neighbor, right? This is a part of our faith as well, that Jibreel, that's what he says to him over and over and over again. The Prophet ﷺ also was once seen saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you saying Ameen? He said, well, Jibreel was making dua. And Jibreel made dua against three people. The one whose parents reach old age and he doesn't honor them. Jibreel said, Rahima Anfu. You know, SubhanAllah, Jibreel Isa made dua against that person, may be humiliated. The second person, the one who Ramadan comes and goes and he's not forgiven by his Creator. It's such a merciful month, it's a month of mercy. How can Ramadan come upon you and leave you and you're not forgiven by your Lord? The third one, the one who hears the name of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and doesn't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jibreel Islam found that offensive. But what's it like when Jibreel decides to tell the Prophet something, when he gives him life advice? Now this narration that I'm about to share with you, is towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that because of the age of the Sahaba that narrated it. They were young children that narrated this narration. It happens when the Prophet ﷺ now is established, he's successful, everything is done, right? People are coming into the religion and throng, everything is, is done. Jibreel comes to the Prophet ﷺ. And he says, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad. Now by the way, does Allah ever say to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Muhammad in the Qur'an? No. Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Rasulullah, O oh Prophet of God, O oh Messenger of God. So why is it that Jibreel has the audacity to say Ya Muhammad? In fact, the scholars say when Jibreel says Ya Muhammad, he's telling the Prophet ﷺ, this is outside of the capacity of revelation. What I'm about to say to you, is from me Jibreel to you Muhammad. So that's the only time he doesn't say Ya Rasulullah is when I want to tell you something just between me and you now. Okay? So he says Ya Muhammad. Five advices here. Ish ma shi't fa innaka mayit. Live as you will, but know that one day you're going to die. One day you're going to die. He says, وَحْبِبْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love whom you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. So the first ones, don't get attached to this, this world. Your purpose lies beyond this world. Don't get attached to people of this world. Because eventually they will leave you and you will leave them. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ do as you will and know that you will be compensated and rewarded accordingly. The compensation is in the hereafter. Meaning what? Everything comes in the hereafter. All the reward comes in the hereafter. Keep doing what you do and know that the reward is in the hereafter. So the first one, عِشْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ Live as you will but know that one day you're going to die. وَحْبِبْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love who you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ Do as you will, and know that one day you will be rewarded accordingly. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ Know that the nobility of the believer is his standing up in prayer at night. It's not in being a ruler, it's not in having thousands of followers, it's not in being a king, it's not in having this or having that. The nobility of a person comes from his standing up in prayer at night, invoking his Lord. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْهِ وَعِزَّهُ And as for his dignity, إِسْتِغْنَاءُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ It's his being independent of people. Financially, emotionally, mentally, physically. 
your izzah, your dignity as a person, is try not to be dependent on people. Try to absolve yourself of needing people in any way whatsoever. That's profound life advice right there. SubhanAllah, that's something that we can all take to ourselves. Now the next incident I'll share with you is actually Jibreel giving advice in a very subtle way, but it's profound advice as well. This narration that I'm about to share with you is so profound. Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah in his famous book, Al-Khushu' fi salah Humility in Prayer, the last chapter is just about this hadith, even though it has nothing to do with prayer. Because of what it means. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in authentic hadith that I was sitting with Jibreel alayhi salam. فَإِذًا شَقَّ أُفُقُ السَّمَاءِ And then all of a sudden the sky split وَنَزَلَ malak, And an angel came down. فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيْنَا And he started to come close to us. Now you want to know what makes this narration so strange? Rasulullah says, فَلَمَّا رَآهُ جِبْرِيلِ تَصَاغَرْ When Jibreel saw this angel, he became smaller, he held himself. The ulama say tasaghar, he held himself, like bracing for something. The angel came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, inni Rasulullah ilayk. I'm a messenger that's been sent to you from God. Ukhayiruka. I'm giving you a choice. Bayna an takuna, nabiyan abda, o nabiyan malika. I'm here to give you a choice. Either you live, you're a prophet who lives like a king, or a prophet that lives like a humble slave. Who can give me an example of Nabi and Malika? A prophet that lives like a king. Sulaiman Islam, Dawood Islam, and Nabi and Malika means that you'll live comfortable. Look, you can have a great life, live very comfortably, be a king, have the riches of this world, do whatever you want, and you'll still have the hereafter. It's not going to decrease from you in any way whatsoever. So you can either be that, or you can continue to live like a humble slave. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ used to go nights in hunger, stones tied to his stomach. He suffered from poverty at the very worst, even after success, right? So you have a choice now. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَنَظَرْتُ إِلَىٰ جِبْرِيلِ I looked at Jibreel. He said, فَأَشَارَ إِلَيَّ أَن تَوَاضَعْ Jibreel did this. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I said to him, بَلْ نَبِيًا عَبْدًا I'll choose to be a prophet that lives like a humble slave. So the angel left. So I looked at Jibreel salam. This was very strange. Jibreel salam said, هَذَا الملك, This angel, لَمْ يَنزِلْ قَبْلَ الْيَوْمِ He's never been down before this day. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَا بَالُكَ تَسَاغَرْتُ Why is it that you got smaller and, and, and were afraid? He said, وَاللَّهِ مَا ظَنَنْتُهُ نَزَلَ إِلَّا بِقِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ He said, I swear by Allah, I didn't think that he came except to announce the Day of Judgment. Who was that angel? Israfil. When Jibreel saw Israfil come down, he thought it was all over. So Jibreel even became afraid at the sight of Israfil. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, the, he ends his book with Bal Nabi and Abda. Choose to be a humble servant. And how did this affect the Prophet ﷺ physically as well? I mean, obviously he continued to live in very humble means. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to eat his food, sometimes he'd lay back, recline and eat. But after that incident, the Prophet ﷺ would only eat his food sitting up. So the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that you only eat your food sitting up? He said, because this is more befitting for Nabi and Abda, for a Prophet that will live like a humble slave. So it affected the Prophet ﷺ. That incident actually affected the Prophet ﷺ.